So what I'm going to do in this uh, hour or so, or 45 minutes, is talk about the bacterial cell structure. And these are going to be the things that a cell needs in order to grow, divide, cause disease, whatever it's going to do. And this is my little drawing of a bacteria, and we're going to start on the outside. So the first thing I want to point out is the membrane. And the membrane, also called the cytoplasmic membrane, so the membrane is what keeps a bacteria or any cell separate from the rest of the world. All of your cells are surrounded by membranes, and they're needed to um, yeah, basically keep their guts inside. You can think of them as a balloon or something around the cell. And the membrane, I'm going to spend quite a bit of time talking about the membrane because it becomes very important with antibiotic resistance. The membrane is made up of something called a phospholipid bilayer. And it acts as a barrier between the environment and the inside of the cell. What I've drawn here is a slice showing uh, a phospholipid bilayer. But of course, it's three-dimensional. It goes all around the cell. And what this phospholipid bilayer actually is, it's made up of identical or mostly identical subunits, each of which have a little tail in the orange-yellow here and a little circle on the top. The little circle on the top is hydrophilic. Hydrophilic means water-loving. So this is the part that is going to be exposed to the outside world or the inside of the cell. It likes water. In the center here, these tails are hydrophobic. Hydrophobic, afraid of water, meaning they don't want to be exposed to water. An example of this is oil. Oil, if you put oil in water, it tends to clump together. Phospholipids are the same. If you put phospholipids in water, they will form little um, bubbles by themselves just to protect them, protect the inner tails from water. So this is the basic structure of all phospholipid membranes in all organisms, as shown here. Now, the membrane keeps molecules from leaving the cell or from entering the cell. So in other words, molecules on the outside can't go in and from the inside can't go out. However, that can create a problem for the cell. Can you think what that might be? So if it's completely sealed off from the outside world, could that create a problem? Discuss for 30 seconds. It can't take up energy, specifically food in a general sense. It can't take up anything from the outside into the cell and it can't get rid of anything toxic. So you have to have some way of going through a membrane. And what you have are membrane proteins. So embedded in this membrane are proteins, and I'll talk more about proteins in a moment, which allow the transport of molecules through the cell membrane. They're usually quite specific, meaning that not just anything can go through, but for things that the cell wants to go through, like glucose, for example, food, will tra be transported through these membranes. They can form little channels through the membrane. So you absolutely have to have these membrane proteins. And this is true in all cells. So that's what a membrane is. But bacteria also have a layer on top of the membrane. So the membrane is showing black here, but then you have this gray layer here, and we call that the cell wall. And the cell wall is outside the cytoplasmic membrane, and I'm going to describe that now. So I mentioned that there are different shapes of bacteria, but there's also another characteristic that is very uh, diagnostic for what type of bacteria you have. And that is something called gram stain. 
And this was uh, invented around 150 years ago or so. So this is a very old technique, which stains bacteria either pink or purple, depending on some characteristics they'll come to. So in this example, the pink ones are called gram-negative, and they're gram-negative rod shapes or bacilli. And the purple ones here are gram-positive cocci, so they're round. So this, most bacteria are separated into the, these two categories. So what's the difference? What's the difference between a gram-positive and gram-negative? Well, it all has to do with the cell wall. A gram-positive bacteria has this kind of shape, uh, structure. So you have the cytoplasmic membrane that I drew before. I didn't include the proteins, but they're there. And on top of it, you have something called peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan is made up of a linking set of molecules such that it's kind of like a stiff neck. Net. So if you think of a tennis net, so you've got uh, holes in between, but you have strong connections between all around. This ground positive has many, many layers of this peptidoglycan. glycan. So it has a very thick set of peptidoglycan. glycan. On the other hand, Gram-negative bacteria look like this. They've got a cytoplasmic membrane, as before, but they have a very thin layer of peptidoglycan and then a second membrane. So they have a double membrane in gram-negative bacteria. The function of this peptidoglycan is primarily to give the cell its shape. So it determines if the cell is rod-shaped or a circle or a corkscrew or anything like that. So the peptide lichen is necessary to keep the cell's shape. And molecules can move fairly freely through the peptide glycan. Some examples of gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria are here. Gram-positive Staphylococcus aureus or MRSA, uh, Streptococcus pneumoniae, Gram-negative E. coli or salmonella are both gram-negatives. So here's another little question for you. Some antibiotics target only gram-negative and some only gram-positive bacteria. Can you think why that might be? So think about that one for a minute. Because the cell wall of gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria differ, antibiotics act differently on them. First, the physical properties of the cell wall makes it easier or more difficult for the antibiotic to enter. And second, as you'll hear later, some antibiotics target the enzymes, in, especially for peptidoglycan, that are different between the two bacteria. In addition, this is more general. Other enzymes also differ between gram-positive and gram-negative. Any further questions about that?